Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new ESO guide video with me Sherman. Today I want to talk to you guys about a formula I've created that allows any build that you come up with to work. And it doesn't matter the content, whether it be dungeons, trials, normal, vet, it doesn't matter. And to be honest with you guys, I have been using this formula for the last probably, well since August. I is when I, about when I came up with the formula. And since then, I've been using it. And I've been using it religiously on every character I create and every character. Because once I found this formula, and I figured the... the and it was basically learning the game's mechanics. Once I figured out the game's mechanics and the minimum and maximum requirements needed to play the content, which also included the help of a lot of meta builds, I have figured out, like, the sweet spot of the game. Where you need to be to be an effective player. And if you have a build that runs this way, I promise you, any content you play, dungeons, trials, it doesn't matter. It will always work. It doesn't, and don't worry about the, the, the gear sets. Don't worry about the champion points. Worry about this number value. If you can get your numbers there, your champion points will make you more effective. Your gear set choice will make you more effective. And your weapon choice or your skill choices will make you more effective. And that's because this formula is really, really simple, but it's really, really, really good to use. I get asked all the time, how do you come up with, you know, how do you make a build that's, that's, that, that, that's really optimized? I use the same formula. I use the formula and I strip away certain things to, to compensate for the lack of. Like, like, let's say I want to make a DPS character. I compensate by removing some things and adding more to it to make it do more damage. Well, how do you make a tank that does the tanking really well? I compensate, and I compensate, and I compensate. And I, I, it, it's just a matter of doing that that makes the build work. Minimaxing is just that. It's compensating the, the character to be optimized, to be efficient at what their role is. Whether you're playing a damage dealer, a tank, or a healer. Now, a lot of people don't agree with the way I put together a lot of my builds because they think tanks can't do damage. They think healers can't do damage. They think that, that DPS can only do damage. And in a lot of ways, yes, they're right. But in a lot of ways, they're wrong as well because a lot of builds and a lot of roles can coexist or co-manage. And just like with hybrid builds, you can make a really good hybrid build using this same formula. And it's because the game allows you to manipulate it to work this way. Now, a lot of people will see this build that I'm playing right here, my, my, my Khajiit healer, as being a, a completely unusual build. Because it's something that you don't see. You don't see a, a Khajiit healer with a 32k higher Magicka unless they're manipulate like you like unless you break the game or you use a lot of skills that give you a really good magic because they don't get any racial benefits the best kajiti healer i've ever seen had a 28k magica with a 17k health and i was like wow that's cool now i have seen one with 30k magica but that's because the person dumped every attribute into Magicka, and they had to use tri-stats to make up the difference. I don't have any tri-stats. I couldn't afford them this time. So what I did was I manipulated my character to get 32,000 Magicka. An 18k health, 1900 spell damage, 41% critical, and a 19k spell resistance with a 15k physical resistance. Now, there's a formula to this game. There is a formula that works with this game, and it's because the game's mechanics only have a requirement of a certain number value in order to complete the content. What do you think the maximum what, what do you think the maximum value of a DPS is to complete the content? Well here's the here's the, 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 the funny part. This is where you're gonna laugh at me, you're gonna say I'm wrong, but it's true. Thirty two thousand. A DPS only needs thirty two thousand primary stamina or magic art. They need at least a, 20, a 2,000 to 3,200 spell damage. They need at least a 50 to 65% critical to make it through all content in the game. That's it. That's what you need. And you will be the best DPS in the game. You'll be one of the best DPS in the game. In fact, 
you'll be a super good DPS because of having 32,000 here. That means you can manipulate your health to give you greater health. You can also do your resistances a little differently and get greater resistances because there's a lot of mixing and maxing, mi minimaxing you can do to play with it to give your character great survivability with great damage potential. Now, as a healer, do I need great damage potential? No, but, I, but you know, the, the better damage I can do, the better I help my group. The more damage I can do as a healer me also means the more healing I can do. What about a tank? Why does a tank need 2K, 2K weapon damage in a, you know, 32% or a higher critical? It's because it makes them better at the game, the rest of the game. Not just Dungeons and Trials, the whole game. Now remember, I told you this, this formula works in the whole game. This doesn't just work Dungeons and Trials. This doesn't just work PvP. This works in every aspect of the game. And that's because I've took every aspect of the game, and I've taken every meta build I could find, and basically came up with a simple formula that allows me to make any build work. The game's all about three things anyways. Resource management, survivability, and damage. Because no matter what in the game, you need good resource management to apply your abilities and to make them the most effective as possible. Spell damage and weapon damage to increase your damage capabilities and make your damage more viable. And then survivability. And as long as you have that and you're good at it, any content in the game will become easy. Including world bosses. I solo world bosses with this healer build. I solo public dungeons and dungeons. Some I've, I've soloed two dungeons with this build, and I thought it was funny. Even though they're the more of the easier ones, like Darkshade Caverns is pretty easy, but try soloing it with a healer. And then you, you'll think it's impossible. But it is 100% plausible because it's not a difficult dungeon. It's just a matter of mitigating and healing and doing damage. And anybody in the game, any class in the game, can be any of the three roles. And the best part about it is the fact that when you can combo or hybrid the roles, and you can play a tank DPS, or a healer tank, or a DPS healer, and you can do it really good. Because the game allows us to play the game literally how we want. As long as you can meet these numbers, and I'm not kidding you, as long as you can meet 32,000 and 20k health, 32,000 primary, 20k health, 2k weapon damage or spell damage, and 32% or higher critical as a healer, any content in the game will become easy to you. And as long as you can get as close to 20k resistances with buffs and stuff, <laughs> yeah, it even becomes easier. Now, champion points, gear sets, skills you use, allow you to optimize your character more towards a role you're playing. Like wearing certain gear sets, not gear types, gear sets, will allow you to be better at your role. Because they either increase your magicka or your health or your stamina. Or your weapon damage, spell damage, criticals, all kinds of things. It's taking all those things, your champion points, your skills, and your character's sets and making it work within this system and every time you do your build will work no matter what and it'll be viable no matter what when people say oh well what are you running say i'm running a 2032 build that's all you have to say and they'll know that it works if they know the game and they know the mechanics they'll know it'll work and it 2032 means you're going to go shoot for 32,000 or above or tw as close to 20k as, as you can, or as close to 2k as you can, or 32k as you, or 3200. You're pushing for the maximum potential of your character, 32,000 or above. You're pushing for 32,000 or above. You're pushing for 20k or above. You're pushing for 20k or above. You're pushing for 20k or above. You're pushing for 32 or above. And as a DPS, the higher the better. <coughs> this is a damage dealer's place. Resource management is actually everyone's place. Survivability is everyone's place. Damage is everyone's place. Same thing goes in here, guys. Look. Survivability, resource management, damage. Gear does the same thing. Depending on what gear you use, it increases or decreases your survivability. And it gives you good, re better resource management. You're compensating 
constantly for different things. And <clears throat> like when somebody told me I couldn't DPS in heavy armor, when I did it and then showed them, they thought I that I was that I was actually only wearing one piece of heavy and the rest was medium armor. And I was like, no. And I took screenshots and sent them to them, and they still couldn't believe that that was my character, because there was no way I could have a 55, almost 60 percent critical in heavy armor with a 2,500 weapon damage, unbuffed, and playing in heavy armor and and hitting numbers of 30k DPS, because it's impossible. Now, I know a lot of people know I don't run add-ons. And the reason I don't run add-ons is because I don't need to know the math calculations. I don't need to know the timer calculations. The only thing I need to know is the value of my character's capabilities. Now, I have used add-ons. I have used, you know, um, different things like that. I've even tested a lot of builds on, test, on the test um, new test dummies. And honestly, test dummies are kind of a joke. To be honest, because they they're very it, it, you they, it's perfect situation. It only works for perfect situation. You take one of these builds and try it on a test dummy, and you'll see a you'll see that you are still capable of doing the kind of damage that you could. And that's because the game has diminished returns in a lot of places. Like champion points have diminished returns. Your stats have di diminished returns. Your resistances get diminished returns after a certain point. Everything gets diminished returns, and that's because they don't want our characters to be gods. Now, I thought that there wasn't diminished returns and resistances until I did a test. And you do get diminished returns after 36,000. You start to see the diminished returns in your resistance, in your survivability. And that's because at 32,000, you have 50% capability to block. But once you break 36, you don't go from at 42 per, you know if you can get 42k you're not getting an extra 10 percent damage reduction or damage block in there yeah you're about four percent five percent more damage blocked and that's because between those two differences the the you get diminished returns the same thing goes for block capability after like 65 percent in your block capability like block reduction you get diminished returns. And that's because the, they don't want you to have 100% block capability. Just like they don't want you to have 100% crit rate. Just like they don't want you to have 100% in anything. Because, now it's okay with crit damage. But when it comes to certain things, they don't want you to have 100% effect. They want you to have flaws. And they want your character to have weaknesses. Because they, the character can only go so far. Just like when you have... 36,000 or above in your, your attributes, you get diminished re returns. And they used the same formula that they did in the champion points. They used the diminished returns, very similar there. Anything past 36 points in the champion points gives you higher diminished returns. And they did this throughout the game. But that's, that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, this formula works anywhere in the game. It works in dungeons. It works in trials. It works in, in, in PvP. It works everywhere. And that's because the game is built around this structure that the base value of a character is... Or the minimum value a character needs is 20k. The maximum value a character needs is 32,000. And that's because those numbers are easily met. Even trials, hard mode trials, vet mode trials, hard mode trials are built around that 32,000. Anything that you can do to exceed those values, and that's all minimaxers have done is exceeded those values and reduced the 20k health value, is they found the, the basically like a, 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 a more effective way to play the game. And in doing so, they, are, they do actually give up a lot of things for their character in a lot of, a lot of times. But the game is literally built around this 2032 value. I've tested it time and time again. I've been testing it for six months. Like hardcore. In dungeons and trials. What do you think I keep running all this stuff? Running all these builds? Or this content with that? Now, like, take for example, like I was saying, Chudin. You do the Chudin fight with below 32,000 resistances, most likely you're going to die. If you can have a consistent 32,000 resistance the whole fight, you will see that you have greater survivability with that fight. And if you can block damage, more damage, by popping damage shields 
or blocking them with sword and board, you will see greater survivability on your character. And that's because that fight, that dungeon, is made for vet mode is made for you to have those kind of resistances. It's made for you to have that kind of playstyle. It's the strong, hardest dungeon in the game, just like White Gold Tower and stuff, requires the same thing. And it requires you to have close to 32,000 resistances. Because that's what the game's minimum is, or maximum is required. And certain content like Vet Maw requires you to have 32k resistances against certain boss encounters. That's why these these builders are building most of their builds to be that high. And they compensate with damage shields with their tanks. It's to give them that much. And it's really easy to make a build and make it work. It's just as long as you can make it work th within those requirements. It doesn't matter gear sets either. As long as the gear set gives you the value, it'll work. As long as your character meets those values, it will always work. <coughs> because the game is built around that value. It's built for tanks to do damage. It's built for healers to do damage. It's built for everyone in the group to do damage. Because the game requires everyone to work together in Dungeons and Trials. In PvP, it requires everyone to work together to win the war. Well, you can't do that if everyone's running like... Wonky builds. If everyone's running the same, like, balanced thing, you're going to see a huge difference in how the game plays. And that's basically what they gave us, is a way to balance the numbers. Most builds are built around this thing. They want you as close to 20k health as possible. They want you to have 32,000 or higher in your primary attribute. And that's because it makes your character more effective when it comes to the, the primary attribute. The secondary attribute, they're, gi they're giving up that that health and that resistances to compensate to give more to make the character or the build more efficient at that but they're giving they're taking away that lack but the game's built literally around this 2032 what's the what's the minimum strength that or health a tank needs for normal dungeons 20,000 that's it for a normal dungeon what about a hard mode dungeon 32,000 if you have 32,000 health or have a way of compensating for the health with damage shields, healing, all that kind of stuff, yeah, then you don't need 32,000. You can get away with less. Heck, I could probably tank a vet mode dungeon on 20k health. And that's because I know the encounters. I know the fights. And it's just a matter of manipulating my character to do that. And it's not hard to do. It's just it's just s building the character to work that way. And even even my, the healers that I run with, most of them say, "God, you wouldn't even need 20k health. You only need like five to keep you alive." And that's they're right. Most of the time, I only need about 5,000 health to stay alive through a dungeon. And that's because my character's set to mitigate a ton of damage. The higher the resistances you have, the higher the health pool you have. The higher the defensive capabilities you have as a tank, the more capable of a tank you are. The higher you have your mitigation capabilities, the better tank you are. The better healer you want to be, the higher the healing effectiveness, the higher critical healing, the higher, you know, magicka, all that kind of stuff, the higher spell damage, the higher crit rate is going to make you a better healer. The same thing goes with playing a, a DPS. The higher the primary attribute, the higher your spell damage, the higher your critical, or the spell or weapon damage, the higher your critical, the more damage you'll do. The, the, the number crunching is just, you know, it's just basic math, guys. It's just, ooh, look at I can do this amount of damage. Ooh, I can do this amount of healing. Ooh, I can do this. When it comes to the game itself, it's understanding the mechanics that makes you a better player. The build just helps you. It just carries you through it. And if your build works 100% of the time, all the time, <laughs> you're not going to be worrying about it as much. And uh, you don't have to play 2032. You can play a meta build. That's fine. The 2032 is, is just the meta formula. Manip a, 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 a tuned meta formula. That's it. And it allows you to make the build you want and make it work. As long as you do that, as long as you do this, like I said, you get a 32 on your primary, you get your health as close to 20k as possible, you get your damage 2k or above as a healer or a tank, and 
<coughs> is a DPS 2K to 3200, and you get your critical between 2000 or 20% and 32% as a tank. 32% or higher as a healer, and then your your DPS above that, way higher. And then your resistances as a DPS and healer, get it to when buffed or whatever as close to 20k as possible on both physical and spell. And then your damage or your your health your health and that and da 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 is going to be fine. How you set your champion points, I don't care. You can go do whatever you want with them. I'm I'm tired of trying to explain champion points to people that don't want to listen. And, and it's not that they don't want to listen. They don't believe that it actually works when it does. The way I use my champion points, it works really well. I use a the same formula there, almost. The 2032, except I call it 2775. I won't go more than 75 in any, any of my things there because it's not worth the, 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 the diminished returns. The same thing goes here. I won't go over a lot of the times. I won't even go over 36,000 because the diminished returns aren't worth it. It's just not worth it. Yeah, I might get some extra damage in there, but it's not worth it. I could push my spell damage up higher and get more effect than applying anything past 36,000. And that's because the diminished returns. And that's all I'm showing you is how you can make a build that's going to be viable no matter the content. Dungeons, Trials, Vet Mode, PvP, PvE, doesn't matter. This character will work in all content. And you can use anything. You can be a healer, tank, DPS, go anywhere in the game, play anything you want, do anything you want, play how you want. And as long as it meets this criteria, it will work. 90% of the time it will work. It just depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, playing a stamina, a full stamina person, trying to be using magic and stuff, isn't going to work. You have to make it a build that works with both. And you just hybridize. One's going to be 32, one's going to be 20. It's that easy. 20 or above. And you can do that with them. Remember, we have tri-stack glyphs for a reason, people. It's so that we can make hybrid classes. That's why tri-stats are there. To create hybrid classes. You want to play that, that mage blade? Make one. Make a mage blade. And I promise you, it will work. As long as your magicka is 32,000, your stamina is 2K, 20k or above, and your, your magic is 32k or above, and your health is close to 20k as possible, your build will work. Why? Because it will work. And as long as you can get your spell damage and your weapon damage to about 2k each, it will work. It will work even better. If you can get it above that, even better. Try Palinals. Try Palinals with Braha's Curse. And see what happens. Try Pelinals with Sentry. Try Pelinals with anything that you want, as long as you put into one thing, Magicka or Weapon Damage, I guarantee you, Spell Damage or Weapon Damage, you'll see a huge difference in how your character plays. Your character will be badass. <coughs> and that's because the game allows it. It is one of the things that is so cool about ESO, is the flexibility in your character. So remember the 2032 formula when you want to make a character and you want to make a super efficient build? Remember 2032, and if you want to minimax it to what like a lot of minimaxers do, it's just a matter of, of, of balancing out the character to optimize it in what you're trying to do. If you want to be a better damage dealer, maximize your, your, your primary attribute, reduce your health pool a little bit, uh, you know, reduce your resistances a little bit to increase the other things. And once you do this, like, if you're playing if a new character of the game, 2032 will be great for you to learn the game. Once you learn the mechanics, then start adjusting things to give you the, the value you, you want to have when you're comfortable with the game. Like, I'm comfortable with the game. I can get away with not having 20k health. I'm comfortable with the game. I can get away with not having 32k health as a tank. I like to have 32k health as a tank because of the survivability. But, and instead, I give up that resistances and reduce it a little bit and compensate with damage shields. It's all a matter of compensation, compensating for what you don't have. And ma making the build work with what you do. And it's really simple. I mean, this game is really easy to work with, guys. It's, like I said, it's not rocket science. 
But unfortunately, that's it for the video, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. It would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more videos by me, I try to post videos on a daily basis so that people can see more stuff. But go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Other than that, I want to thank you for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day, and I will see you all later. Bye.